I for real. A couple of weeks ago, right? She come telling me how I'm too sweet and, and that I just make she belly rule and, and I got her thighs rubbing. What is that? No, man. But yes. Look, she tell me, right? That we need some time apart. To be honest, I wasn't too concerned about that because you know how the girls and them, they're addicted to me sweetness. But then I see she the other day and the girl looking so good, looking so fresh and so lean. Boy, you sure she addicted to you? Boy, yes. But wait, wait, wait. Look at here. Come, come, come. Hide, hide, hide. Boy, come hide now. Oh, I can't believe. But is that what's going on? Really? Why you got to say for yourself? Drink some water, share some love. Tell your body you're sweet enough. Drink some water, share hey, some love. Tell I somebody you're believe, sweet man. enough. Drink hey. some water, share some love. Tell your body you're sweet enough. Drink some water, share some love. Tell somebody, tell somebody, hey, hey. Look at you, no braces, all the internet you can handle. I wasn't so lucky. <laughs> Invis is not your parents' braces. Invis is predictable, less painful, more comfortable. Invisalign. Visit Dr. Blake's General Dentistry and Orthodontics located on South Independence Square Street for your free Invisalign consultation. Call 466-7622 for your appointments. It's time to scratch and match with Digicel. Collect scratch cards when you top up $20 or more at any Digicel reseller or store. Or pay your phone or home and internet bill in full. Scratch and match. Get two or more of the same digital app and you win a prize. It's that simple. Win cash, credit, vouchers, lunches, spa dates, Digicel merchandise and more. Plus, take the top half of your scratch cards to any of our retail stores to qualify for even more prizes in the big draw. Stay tuned to our social media pages to find out how to double or even triple your chances to scratch and match. Top up or pay your bill today. Get scratching, get matching. Digicel, better together. Hello and welcome to the ZIZ Major Newscast. I'm Jason Davis. Ahead of the start of the CXC examinations on Monday, the Ministry of Education held a televised briefing on Sunday to inform the nation of guidelines for students as the exams will be held during a 24-hour lockdown. National CXC Registrar Solomon Claxton outlined several procedures, noting that exams can't be rescheduled and the timetables are available on the CXC website and on the student portal. Students will receive hard copies of the timetables on their first exam day. Mr. Claxton also noted that students registered at CFBC but who live in Nevis will not have to travel to CFBC to sit their exams. Candidates registered with the Clarence Fitzroy Bryant College but you reside in Nevis, you are to remain in Nevis for the duration of your examination your exams will be administered to you. The venue will be the, the Nevis Six Form College venue, and you will write all of your papers there. All right, and then of course we still have to reconcile, so your scripts and everything else will come to come to to sync. It's via the via the transport medium that um, we use, but you would write your exams there. All right, so no need to wake up tomorrow and try to catch the ferry. He said similarly, CSEC students in Nevis who are registered in St. Kitts would also sit their exams in Nevis. We do have one or two um, CSEC students um, in Nevis, um, right in out of center. And your venue would be uh, the Charleston Secondary School uh, for those persons. The education officials also reminded students to bring the required materials such as pens, pencils and calculators. However, gel pens and fountain pens are not allowed. And as public transportation would not be operating during the 24-hour lockdown, school buses will be picking up uniformed students to transport them to the exam sites. However, adult and private candidates would have to facilitate their own transportation. More information can be found at the SKN Exams Facebook 
Facebook page, and the entire briefing can be seen on ZIZ's YouTube channel. Saturday saw a historic high of 1,374 doses being administered in the current COVID-19 vaccine rollout with 1,303 persons taking their second dose. And Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris, who was pleased with the, by the high turnout, has asked more persons to come forward and get vaccinated. Prime Minister Harris made the remarks at the National Emergency Operations Center or NEOC COVID-19 press briefing on Saturday. Earlier that day, he had spent most of his time at the Sylvia Garnett Primary Health Care Facility in Tabernacle, encouraging persons who came for vaccinations. But I have every Saturday been going religiously to the health centers, encouraging, cajoling, enticing persons to do what is necessary so that we could feel a greater sense of safety and security in the country. Indeed, the commitment we make is that the future will be stronger and safer for all. Referring to the number of doses administered on Saturday as historic, the Prime Minister said this is a significant step towards achieving herd immunity. Today, we have had a historic high of 1,374 doses being administered, the largest rollout, I would think, since we have started this program. And of that total, 1,303 went forward for their second dose, thereby closing the gap in a significant way and taking us closer to having 50% of the population um, immunized, having their second dose. The Prime Minister reminded that while all health centers will be open on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday from 11 a.m. to 4 p.m., persons wishing to go to take their second dose will, will be required to show their vaccination card and a government-issued ID in case they're stopped by the police for them to be allowed safe passage. Meanwhile, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Hazel Laws announced during a special NEOC COVID-19 press briefing on Saturday that the new COVID-19 strain that was picked up in St. Kitts and Nevis in May is identified as the Lambda variant. In early June, the Ministry of Health sent samples to the Caribbean Public Health Agency, or CARFA, for genomic sequencing to determine the variant of the SARS-CoV-2 virus that is currently in circulation. The report says that the SARS-CoV-2 variant belongs to the lineage B111 or C.37, C37. The World Health Organization's label for this variant is the Lambda variant. Let me repeat, the Lambda variant. So this is the variant that is in circulation in the Federation. Now the Lambda variant is classified as a variant of interest by the World Health Organization. The Lambda variant, which has been identified in 29 countries, was first identified in Peru in August of 2020. Dr. Laws says it is quite prevalent in the South American countries, including Argentina. At a recent COVID-19 press briefing, Dr. Laws noted that the new strain is more transmissible than the strain we contained last year between March and July, and it is also deadlier. And as the nation headed into a lockdown this weekend, persons were seen flocking to the supermarkets to stock up. Our cameras saw lines at various supermarkets, often extending around corners and onto nearby properties. Although officials had warned against panic shopping, some persons on social media said the lockdown happened to coincide with paydays and regular shopping Saturday shopping schedules. Well, whatever the reason, the persons were observed trying to observe social distancing, but this wasn't the case at all locations. The 24-hour lockdown runs until Thursday, July 1 at 5 a.m. Thursday and Friday of that week will be days of limited operations when persons can restock on essentials before the nation goes back into 24-hour lockdown on Friday night until the following Thursday morning. 
We now take a look at the nation's COVID-19 situation report and vaccination update. Coming up, we'll have another look at some of the stories from the past week. Stay tuned. It's time to scratch and match with Digicel. Collect scratch cards when you top up $20 or more at any Digicel reseller or store. Or pay your phone or home and internet bill in full. Scratch and match. Get two or more of the same digital app and you win a prize. It's that simple. Win cash. Credit, vouchers, lunches, spa dates, digital merchandise, and more. Plus, take the top half of your scratch cards to any of our retail stores to qualify for even more prizes in the big draw. Stay tuned to our social media pages to find out how to double or even triple your chances to scratch and match. Top up or pay your bill today. Get scratching, get matching. Digicel, better together. shopping at furniture and appliances see my friend you look like you buy something from the ashley home store how oh, you know because we get the cash back back coupons, coupons and, and the free groceries for a year cash back is back at horsford's furniture and appliances and ashley furniture shop now and get a chance to win free groceries for one year Want to get away? Now you can. Stop standing in long ATM lines to withdraw cash. Use your national debit or black cards to complete a wide variety of transactions at supermarkets, variety stores, gas stations, pharmacies, and more. Shop online at the most popular websites and stores for quality brands using your national debit or black cards. And take back your time to enjoy all the things that you love to do. Remember, instead of waiting in long ATM lines to withdraw cash, use your national bank cards today. National Bank, always here. Low Broadband and TV is packed with even more value as you get a free Samsung tablet, free installation, and 50% off your bill for three months when you sign up now. Yes, a free Samsung tablet. Power all you do at home with up to 100 megabits per second, super fast broadband. Plus, stay HD entertained with Flow TV. Stream, share, and do more on your new free tablet, which will also keep you connected on the go with ease. Sign up at a Flow store today. Conditions apply. The government of St. Kitts and Nevis has announced a 24-hour lockdown as part of additional restrictive measures being taken to limit the movement of people, which is expected in turn to halt the current spread of the deadly COVID-19 disease in the Federation. In a national televised address on Friday night, Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Timothy Harris said these additional measures have become necessary as, quote, the reduction envisaged over the 14-day incubation period was not realized, end quote. A complete 24-hour lockdown from 6 p.m. Sunday, June 27th to 5 a.m. Thursday, July the 1st. On Thursday the 1st, July, and Friday, July 2nd, there will be limited movement for limited operation 
of essential businesses from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then a return to full 24-hour lockdown from 6 p.m. Friday until July 3rd to Thursday, July 8th. We will again have limited movement for essentials on Thursday, July 8th and Friday, July 9th from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. on both days and return to a 24-hour lockdown on Saturday the 10th and Sunday the 11th of July. The Prime Minister said a shelter-in-place order will be, in strict, will be strictly enforced by the police. Every person shall remain confined to his or her place of residence, inclusive of their yard space, to avoid contact outside their family, with the following exceptions. Essential workers who are required to report to work. Workers required to work in hospitals and medical facilities, licensed providers of security guard services, and such other businesses as may be specifically exempted. For essential travel, for medical emergencies, and for essential travel to a vaccination site, with a vaccination card and one photo ID for production to law enforcement officers on demand between the hours of 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. for Monday, June 28th to Wednesday, June 30th. The other measures as outlined by the Prime Minister are the closure of all businesses during the strict lockdown period, absolutely no mass gatherings, parties or other social events, the closure of all beaches in St. Kitts as well as the suspension of liquor licenses. Special dispensation is being granted to allow students who are sitting external exams to travel to examination centers. Similarly, a limited number of government workers will be allowed to travel to work and special exceptions are made for farmers and fishers to tend to their flock and to go fishing to keep our food supply going during days of limited operation. The Prime Minister said there will be a special carve-out for the island of Nevis which will basically remain the same as obtains presently but will be detailed in the SR&O. Meanwhile, Attorney General the Honorable Vincent Byron says the lockdown, the 24-hour lockdown, was not the first course of action because the government has taken lives and livelihoods into consideration as the country gradually reopens and gets back to a state of normalcy. The Attorney General appeared on a live interview on ZIZ's media platforms on Saturday. Responding to a question of why the lockdown was not implemented earlier, the Attorney General said the approach of limited operations along with the partial lockdown lockdown was a way of having a balance between having economic activity and having citizens and residents reduce their movement and contact with each other. I had a, a program since last year of being gradually open up the economy because people have to live and while the government's strategy has always been lives first we want to protect lives that we understand that people have to get back to work people have to earn a living and so there has been a balance over time of ensuring that where there are some restrictions, we advo advocate and insist that people wear masks, that they social distance, that we sanitize the non-pharmaceutical measures that can help to protect us and must protect us. Um, this has been the gradual approach to have businesses gradually open especially since after October the 31st, when we reopened the borders. The Attorney General said the measures that were in place gave the opportunity for the vaccination program to progress. It has been very important for us to have had that, those measures until the vaccination program could be rolled out and the society, the community, can be vaccinated. Because we believe, we have been told by health experts, this is the World Health Organization and our local ex health experts that this is the best way to control the spread of the virus, to live with the virus, that all of us must be vaccinated.
and so the vaccination program is going exceptionally well as we get closer to that point where the vaccination um, process will be able to impact on us where so many people will not become infected and we can therefore um, live properly with it this has been the approach to have that balance he said this lockdown doesn't mean that if there is another COVID-19 surge in a few weeks or months that a lockdown will be implemented as it is expected that as we move forward, more citizens will become vaccinated and the country will achieve herd immunity. Members of Parliament will meet at national, uh, for an, um, an emergency meeting of the National Assembly at government headquarters on Monday at 10 a.m. According to information out of government headquarters, the Honorable A. Michael Perkins, Speaker of the National Assembly, informed that the meeting of the Assembly is being summoned in accordance with Section 3 of the Standing Orders of the National Assembly. The National Assembly will be broadcast live on ZIZ Radio 96.1 FM and participating radio stations. It can also be viewed live on ZIZ TV, Channel 5 in St. Kitts and Channel 98 in Nevis. It will also be streamed live on www.zizonline.com. Copies of bills of Parliament can be found on the SKNIS website. That's www.sknis.gov.kn under the section Bills. After the break, Antigua and Barbuda Prime Minister expresses support for the LGBTQ plus community. Stay tuned. like the dude who was shopping at furniture and appliances. See my friend, you look like you buy something from the Ashley Home Store. How you know? Because we get the cash back back coupons, coupons and, and the free, free groceries for a year. Cash back is back at Horsford's Furniture and Appliances and Ashley Furniture. Shop now and get a chance to win free groceries for one year. the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry well don't imagine national caribbean insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs insure your life vehicle boat home belongings and your future at nci we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life we serve we protect we satisfy. That's NCI. Call or WhatsApp Agility Exports today at 1-246-417-0477 or email us at info at agilityexports.com to get yours now. We now move to news on the regional scene. Prime Minister Gaston Brown has expressed his support for Antigua and Barbuda's lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender community to live a life free of discrimination in their homeland. Brown made the comment on Saturday as he spoke to an LGBTQ plus activist who called into his weekly radio program. The Prime Minister noted that while he is supportive of the community, enacting laws that will allow something such as same-sex unions 
may be difficult on an island where the majority of the population adheres to a religious doctrine that condemns same-sex relations. He said, quote, we have to respect the fundamental rights and freedoms of all, notwithstanding their sexual or religious orientation or even their ethnicity, and that's the type of inclusive practice of my administration. We don't necessarily support the lifestyle of certain individuals, but we want to make sure that our laws and certainly our practices are not oppressive in any way, end quote. The Prime Minister noted that Antigua and Barbuda has become more tolerant towards the community. Antigua and Barbuda, like the majority of countries in the Western Hemisphere, criminalizes sex acts between gay men. The Sexual Offenses Act allows magistrates to impose a 15-year prison sentence on anyone found guilty of committing buggery. Internationally, Thousands of asylum seekers are waiting on the Mexico-United States border in increasingly unsanitary and precarious conditions. This month, the Biden administration did away with a Trump-era program under which asylum seekers had to stay in Mexico while their cases were processed. With more people arriving every day, migrants' rights advocates are warning that conditions at the camp are no longer sustainable. Al Jazeera's Manuel Rapolo reports from a camp in Tijuana. A migrant camp in Tijuana, Mexico. Some here are asylum seekers whose cases did not make it to court under the Trump administration's Migrant Protection Protocols, or MPP. A recent rollback of this policy by U.S. President Joe Biden has allowed some asylum seekers to enter the U.S., but only those with active MPP cases. Dilma Gonzalez, an asylum seeker from Honduras who has been waiting in Mexico for the last two years, says she's hopeful of the changing policy. The last lawyer told me a judge had closed my case and that I had to open a new one. But then I spoke with a different lawyer who told me my case was not closed and that I still have a chance to enter the United States. The Migrant Protection Protocols, also known as the Remain in Mexico program, forced an estimated 70,000 people to wait for immigration hearings in cities on the Mexican side of the border. Wilmer Avila, also from Honduras, says he's been the victim of violence and even kidnapping since arriving in Tijuana two years ago. But a reopening of his asylum case means he might soon have an opportunity to cross the border legally. I have renewed hope because my lawyers said, have patience, Wilma. They are reopening MPP cases. I had almost given up, but thank God cases are being reopened. If Wilmer's asylum case is accepted, he could soon join the more than 11,000 people with active MPP cases who have been allowed to enter the U.S. since February. But there are many others who are still waiting for guidance on what to do next. Human rights groups estimate there to be around 3,000 people living at this migrant camp. Now, the ongoing COVID-19 health emergency means the border remains closed, disrupting the traditional U.S. asylum process. Now, this means that for thousands of migrants and asylum seekers have no choice but to wait here on this side of the border. With more people arriving every day, migrants' rights advocates warn that conditions at the camp are no longer sustainable. The camp is in a terrible situation. Organized crime has infiltrated it. There's disease, there are risks, people have suffered violence there, and I believe it's a ticking time bomb. Despite the phasing out of Trump-era policies like MPP, the Biden administration has yet to normalize the U.S. asylum process. Experts say that until the system becomes more streamlined, the crisis on this side of the border will only continue to worsen. Manuel Rafalo, Al Jazeera, Tijuana, Mexico. We'll be right back with a recap of the top stories. Stay tuned. Whether you're at home or abroad, ZIZ's social media platforms help you stay connected with what's going on in St. Kitts and Nevis. Keep up with daily events by liking our Facebook page. Follow us on Twitter at ZBC Online. Like our pictures on Instagram and subscribe to our videos on YouTube. Also, you can watch us live on the ZIZ mobile app and our website, ZIZonline.com. No matter where you are, ZIZ is just a click away. ZIZ Broadcasting Corporation, reaching you wherever you are. 
Imagine having the luxury of putting all your trust in one insurance company and being able to enjoy a life to the fullest without having to worry. Well, don't imagine. National Caribbean Insurance is here to take care of all your insurance needs. Insure your life, vehicle, boat, home, belongings, and your future. At NCI, we make it our business to ensure that you enjoy every stage in life. We serve, we protect, we satisfy. That's NCI. We now wrap up with a recap of the top stories. Education Ministry updates the public on guidelines for CXC exams. Prime Minister Harris pleased with recent vaccination turnout. And variant of COVID-19 in the Federation identified. And that's it for the ZIZ Major Newscast. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jason Davis.